So what are we learning about today? We're going to learn about supporting your core for strength mm -hmm. and stability. Okay, and what does that mean to me? Well, we know the number one complaint heard worldwide by all doctors, medical doctors, chiropractors, osteopaths, number one complaint amongst everybody is low back pain. Okay, that's true. Everybody knows somebody that has lower back issues. Yeah, so they got an aunt, an uncle, father, son, someone in their family, immediate family has low back pain. Well, we're going to talk about that because A, it's the number one complaint and B, very, very hard to treat for your standard medical doctor. Okay. They have to look at it a little bit differently. And that's where, as a chiropractor, we come in because this is really our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. We do great with this. Now, if we look at the anatomy of the lower back, these are vertebrae or bones in your spine. Now, these are the nerves that come out, right? These are direct extensions off of your brain. So they're kind of important. Wouldn't you agree? Well, it depends on whose brain. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we look at this, the proper mechanics is that this should move. You see how this moves? Yeah. Do you see how the white squishy thing, the disc, mm -hmm. is nice and pliable? It moves really well when I move this around. Yeah, it looks like a, a marshmallow. It does. It's yeah. our shock absorber. Now what happens is, this, let's say this bone here will subluxate. Okay. This vertebrae is subluxated, and with that subluxation, it brings pressure on these nerves. It'll irritate the nerves or chafe them. Once that happens, whatever is on the end of this nerve is going to suffer. Okay. We know that the muscles surrounding this area are going to be innervated or given su nerve supply by these nerves. So basically what you're saying is once this happens, these nerves, they're, not, they're no longer sending a message out to this part of my body saying work right. Well, they could be still sending the message. It's just not going to be as efficient or as effective as okay. it really should. All right. All right. We know a nerve will change its end results just by the weight of a dime being placed on it. Really? Yeah. They're pretty a sensitive. Dime. Pretty sensitive. So you can see how this moves. This disc is key for the movement. Okay. If we look at a disc, it's actually designed like this. The center part, this is where this is hollow, is actually really like a jelly donut. It's very squishy in the center. And then the outer part is more cartilaginous fibers to hold the squishy stuff in. Ideally, once this is compressed, the squishy stuff presses out and creates mm -hmm. a nice stable structure. So you can see how this kind of squishes out when we compress it a little bit. So we'll see once this vertebrae subluxates and it's not moving on this disc, this disc will start to dehydrate. Mm -hmm. And over time, if it's dehydrating, it will degenerate. Okay. They'll develop into degenerative disc disease, which is a form of osteoarthritis or more commonly just known as arthritis. And once we have that, it becomes very hard to treat. So A, they have to be evaluated for subluxations and they have to have the subluxation treated. Now, once that subluxation has been removed, we can talk about stimulating the muscles. A lot of people think of strengthening the muscles, and it's more of, let's stimulate them, let's bring them back up to speed, just get them working again, then we can strengthen them. So you, you go in, you, you get your diagnosis, you get it adjusted, and then it's stimulating them, basically you're, you're teaching them how to work again. Correct. So that way you can build strength. So this is a, a long process we're talking about. It's very about. long. Okay. And this is something where we want to develop a couple exercises that you can do on a daily basis. This isn't an hour, two hour routine in the gym where you're going to break a sweat. This is very simple exercises. One way to do this or to evaluate it is through an orthopedic test called the Trendelenburg test. Okay. If I can have you face forward, so the Trendelenburg test is just standing with both feet forward and raising one leg off the ground. Okay. Now a positive for this or to show muscle weakness is that the hip drops a little bit. Now if you stand back up, if you raise this leg up and the hip drops, it drops down. it's the left glute medius muscle that's weak. Okay. So a way to stimulate that is just through this, this orthopedic test. Stand there and don't let the hip fall down. Force yourself to hold it up. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, since exercise is progressive in nature, one way that we can progressively make this harder is to incorporate a nice squishy disc. We, in our office, we call these rhino discs. Okay. So we're going to put that on the ground. You're going to step with your left foot right in the middle. Okay. And we want you to do the same test. And we're going to see if it's any uh, harder. <laughs> yeah, it's harder. <laughs> so you can see it's progressive in nature. We need okay. to develop some stability, some 
core strength before we progress to this, correct? <laughs> yeah. So let's show another thing that we can do utilizing these. It'd be great for the lower back. Okay. We'll set that right there on the chair. Now, when I show this model and I show this moving, we want to simulate or stimulate that disc through movement, right? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can see in the model that when the disc moves, it's stimulated. So we're going to move. So as we sit here, the proper movement or the best movement that we could possibly do is we're going to push our pelvis up to the right knee okay. at an angle. Okay. And then bring it straight back to your right uh, rear hip. Okay. Up across to the left knee. And then straight back to your left one okay. again. And then repeat. So come back up to your right. And then straight back again. And then back up to your left. And then straight back on the left. So it's not so much of a circular movement. It's more of a direct line. Front, back. Right. More like a very linear figure eight. Okay. If you're looking at it from an aerial view. Okay. Now, as you can feel, as you, and you can see your shoulders moving. Yeah. Off the start, a lot of people will do this. They'll move a lot with it because there is disintegration between the mind and these muscles. Okay. Okay. And so you're not we supposed want, to do that. No, we want good. We want good control. Okay. We know with the core muscles that if we're sitting and we reach out to grab a pen even before our arm ever starts to move, mm -hmm. our core muscles contract. Mm -hmm. Very, very huge. They did a study, 95% of people that have lower back pain, or chronic lower back pain, A, through MRI, they can see fatty infiltration. They can see fat actually starting to develop in the muscles. So you know those muscles are not being used. Then also B, those same people, when they reach out to grab the pin and they're sitting, mm -hmm. instead of their core contracting first, their arm moves first, so their core is lagging behind. You see the disintegration, or the imbalance in, those, in the muscle activity in the body. And that's when it's starting to look like this hard piece. Yeah, it's starting to dehydrate. Okay. okay. So we wanna, off the start, if we have to move like this, that's fine. We wanna progress though, to where it's a nice movement just with the hips, uh -huh. And the upper body is held still. And as we develop into this, this would be a nice daily routine for someone to do to keep those muscles stimulated. Now, remember, you have to do this for at least eight weeks before that muscle will actually start to get physically stronger. It takes eight weeks for the brain and the muscle to refine the pathway along that nerve so that mus muscle growth or hypertrophy can actually occur. It takes eight weeks to reconnect that? Eight weeks. So any muscle gains that you obtain during the first eight weeks of, of starting to work out with uh -huh. resistance training is just a matter of your nerves working better. Oh. So it would make perfect sense that chiropractic would be a great thing to add into an exercise program because chiropractic helps those nerves work better as well. I'm liking this rolling thing. I can put some music on. Yeah. Hang out. Yeah. <laughs> can I keep this? We, can, uh, we might be able to set something up like that. Excellent. This is going to be fun. Well, Dr. Clint, thank you so much for coming in today. I learned a lot, and I always appreciate that. Um, I'd like you to leave us with some final thoughts, things that we should be thinking about and doing as we move forward into this day. Well, obviously, you need to talk to your chiropractor or a chiropractor close to you about what's the proper steps, where's the proper stage for you to start. This is very situational with everybody. There's different causes of low back pain. The subluxation in, is typically the number one cause of low back pain. And like I said, you need to get the subluxation corrected and then start stimulating the muscles. And remember that stimulation is gonna take time before we can actually strengthen the muscles. And if you'd like, you can give me a call at my office in Castle Rock, Colorado. I'll help you the best I can over the phone or we'll get you guided to a chiropractor near you. Or just talk to, if you're sitting in a chiropractic office, talk to your chiropractor and see what's the best step for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Clint. Thank you. And we're going to see you soon. I think you're coming back and talking about sprouting. I think I am. Let's get forward to that. Awesome. <laughs>